When our mind cannot explain what our eyes see, we turn to scientists and experts for help. But sometimes even the brightest minds cannot unravel the mysteries of nature or mystical phenomena that occasionally get caught on camera. We can only speculate about the diversity of the universe. You are watching Top Facts on this one-hour episode, where we will look at a collection of the most mysterious, strange, incredible, and unexplainable photos that have baffled the entire planet. If you're interested, get comfortable and let's go. Humanity has long been looking to the stars, yet we have not answered the question of whether there is life beyond Earth. For millennia, we have been lonely in the universe, and we are trying our best to go beyond to explore the unknown. Without hints, we wouldn't be asking this question. There are evidences that aliens visited Earth. Some even believe that their intervention was necessary for the construction of grandiose ancient structures. Recent history reports, unidentified flying object sightings, sparking debates, investigations, and endless speculation. While many anomalous phenomena have practical explanations, the sky is full of unidentified objects, such as airplanes, atmospheric phenomena, or satellites. The scientific community remains steadfastly skeptical until the first empirical evidence appears. Several large-scale projects, such as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, are dedicated to the search for intelligent life beyond Earth. On this blurry photo, you can see two gentlemen on horses, and underneath them in the middle, a small creature with a huge head. Yes, your feelings are understandable. For some reason, photos that have something strange on them always turn out to be grainy or blurry. I think so too. But conspiracy theory supporters claim that the photo shows a real alien, to which skeptics argue. It's just a toddler caught under the hooves of horses, running alone on a road in the forest, which is a common thing in Chile. Judge for yourself and make your own decision. An intriguing discovery was made in Wyoming in 1932. Gold miners in the San Pedro Mountains, during a blast at the cliffside, found a small sealed chamber and inside it a strange mummified figure only about 25 centimeters tall. The figure, sitting cross-legged, presents a mysterious sight. Its skull is of a flattened shape, its species is unclear, and its origin has sparked numerous hypotheses. The mummy could be either an ancient native or a representative of a tiny humanoid race, simply read, an alien. Analysis revealed sharp teeth and a fully formed adult human skeletal structure. Leading experts concluded that the mummy was more likely an adult than a child with abnormal deviations. How then to explain its small size and unique appearance? Many continue to believe that this mummy is actually the remains of an extraterrestrial being. What do you think? Is it completely impossible or absolutely incredible? A 40 centimeter long human finger was discovered in Egypt, and it seems not all the secrets of ancient Egyptian civilization are lost to the past. Photos taken by a researcher named Gregor Spohr in 1988 resemble images of a human finger, if not for the size. If we calculate the scale of the person, the owner of this finger would have been about 5 meters tall. An untidy nail adds credibility to this intriguing artifact. Who knows, maybe such a giant existed in the past. After all, the tale of Gulliver was written. The photographer himself paid $300 for the opportunity to photograph the relic from a tomb. And it is impossible to verify the authenticity of the super finger because it is now in someone's private collection. The next photograph at first glance does not seem strange, but as soon as we look at the faces of these girls, we notice how strange they are, as if they are someone's failed experiment or just ordinary mannequins photographed near the pyramids. Do you think this photo is genuine or was Photoshop used? Write in the comments and let's move on. A quite intricate device was discovered at the site of an ancient shipwreck near the Greek island of Antikythera in 1901. 
damaged remnants of an old mechanism that, upon research, turned out to be a primitive analog computer. This device served as a reminder of dates, calculated positions of celestial bodies, and performed computations involving significant numbers, such as upcoming solar and lunar eclipses, as well as the Olympic Games. A total of 82 fragments were extracted and identified, with only seven helping to ascertain the purpose of the device. Dating back to the 1st or 2nd century BCE, this ancient Greek mechanism was a system of interconnected gears, set in motion by turning a handle, which then rotated other gears. It resembled a wooden box with bronze panels and dials on both sides. We can be certain that even back then, people possessed an advanced understanding of astronomy. They could predict celestial phenomena and track the movements of heavenly bodies. Such technological complexity is not typically associated with ancient societies, even Greek ones. This reveals a gap in our understanding of the knowledge of ancient civilizations and an underestimation of their technological achievements. Who knows, perhaps geniuses like Archimedes of Syracuse or Hipparchus of Nicaea had a hand in these ingenious creations. Polish book dealer Wilfred Wojnik acquired this enigmatic manuscript in 1912, a 15th-century scriptbook resembling a codex filled with mysterious illustrations and text in an unknown language. This manuscript has confounded the brightest minds worldwide. It features captivating botanical illustrations, astronomical diagrams, depictions of bathers, and pharmaceutical images. However, it doesn't correspond to any known astronomical, botanical, medical chronicles, or textbooks. Moreover, many of the depicted plant species remain unidentified and do not resemble any known earthly plants. The astronomical charts also baffle. Neither constellations nor planetary systems align with any modern understanding. The manuscript became a subject of discussion and was eventually deemed an alchemical document or speculative fantasy of its time, possibly a pharmacopoeia. Despite numerous decryption attempts, the manuscript's text and the meanings behind its peculiar illustrations remain an unsolved puzzle, inviting us into a world of intrigue, secrets, and perhaps the whims of an unknown alchemist. People from all over the world come to Florence to the Palazzo Vecchio Museum to see the famous painting Madonna with St. Giovannino, which was created in the 15th century by the artist Domenico Ghirlandaio. However, it's not just because of its beauty or historical value. There's something both eerie and captivating about the painting, a mystery from the past or the future. As we know, in those times, there couldn't be random brush strokes on a canvas. Every tiny detail either served as an allegory or conveyed a specific message. So in the upper right corner above Madonna, in the sky, you can clearly discern a disc-shaped object. And in the distance on the shore, there's a person with a dog gazing at this object. Thus, this is not a coincidence or a fly. The enigma lies not in the main subject of the painting, but in the secondary details. If you look closely, you'll notice a bright golden light emanating from the object. The man with the dog seems to be shielding his eyes, possibly from the intense brightness. The shape and the radiance of the object have led some observers to speculate that it's an unidentified flying object, and the painting might be a historical record of extraterrestrial existence. The depicted light also emits a kind of otherworldly mystical signal, Skeptics argue that the depiction of a deity, possibly an angel or the Holy Spirit, might also carry an element of magical radiance, such as the image of the Star of Bethlehem or a miraculous sign in the heavens. Despite these interpretations, the exact meaning of the strange object in the painting remains unknown, and the painting itself continues to be a highly valuable mystery. Sometimes, doubts about the authenticity of historical photos can arise. And here's an interesting example. A photograph that was bought for $2 in a souvenir shop in 2010. The photo, presumably taken in 1870, depicts the legendary outlaw Billy the Kid. The Kid. There are many chronicles about this historical criminal, but only one authentic photo exists, showing Billy the Kid and his gang, the Regulators, 
peacefully playing croquet in the company of their ladies. If the second photo had turned out to be genuine, it would have become the second and last, potentially worth millions of dollars. Establishing its authenticity was a challenging task, and facial recognition software revealed a match between the person in the portrait and the figure playing croquet. However, doubts persisted. The scene of the game somehow doesn't align with the Wild West Bandit's lifestyle. Undoubtedly, the photograph garnered tremendous interest from historians and the general public alike, becoming the subject of a National Geographic documentary film. In 2010, an intriguing photograph from the early 1940s once again sparked debates and speculations. In 1941, during the opening of the South Forks Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia, a crowd gathered, which is natural for such a significant event. However, even without careful scrutiny, it's evident from the picture that one figure stands out conspicuously from the crowd, as if the character got the era wrong. He was dubbed the time-traveling hipster, he is dressed in modern clothing, including a logo t-shirt, a hoodie, and sunglasses, all of which are remarkably out of place for 1941. Moreover, he seems to be holding a modern camera in his hands, adding another layer of mystery to the photo. Skeptics offered reasonable explanations. Yes, sunglasses could have already existed. The logo on the t-shirt could be from a Montreal hockey team. The sweater could have been a contemporary item available in the 1940s. As for the camera, it could have been a Kodak, a compact folding model that, although rare, did exist. The photo presents a curious contradiction, making us start to think about countless books and movies about time travel. What if this isn't just science fiction or fantasy? The time-traveling hipster remains an enigma. Whether it's someone's clever prank on a historical photograph a genuinely ultra-fashionable character, or an optical illusion. What do you think? And again, the time traveler. Sometimes the most intriguing mysteries manifest in ordinary circumstances, like the story of an undated photograph from the 1930s. In the photo, we see beachgoers on the shores of British Columbia in Canada. Among the typical beach attire of that era, only one person stands out, generating bewilderment with their appearance of a contemporary surfer. Could this also be a time traveler? The young man in question appears to be wearing a modern graphic t-shirt, swim shorts, and his hair is tousled, reminiscent of hairstyles from the late 20th century. This is clearly not the fashion typical of the 1930s. Skeptics abound, and they have debunked the myth of a future visitor. They assert that the t-shirt and shorts are rolled up sweater and trousers, acceptable for a hot day at the beach, and his modern hairstyle could be windblown or simply wet hair. This photograph continues to provoke debates and assumptions, and despite logical explanations being present, some still want to believe it's a surfer in time, catching a retro wave. One of the most perplexing photographs in recent history was taken during a serene family outing in 1964. Jim Templeton, a firefighter, photographed his young daughter in a field near Solway Firth, along the Irish Sea's western shores in the UK. When the photo was developed, an unexpected figure appeared in the background, resembling an astronaut in a spacesuit. It appears that a tall figure in a helmet or cowl in white attire is turned away from the camera. Templeton claimed that no one else was present in the frame when he took the shot. The film was even examined by Kodak experts and police photographers who found no evidence of tampering. Skeptics dismissed it again, suggesting that the astronaut was actually Templeton's wife, accidentally caught in the frame. Her blue dress might appear white in the photo, and the helmet could be a whimsical occurrence of her hair in the shot. The photo became the subject of numerous TV shows and documentaries, as well as fuel for speculation about aliens, time travel, and otherworldly beings. The world map created in 1513 and named after its creator, the Ottoman explorer and cartographer Ahmed Muhyiddin Piri, attracted attention with its detailed depiction of various parts of the world. Europe and Asia, Africa, both Americas, the Azores and Canary Islands, Atlantic Islands, Japan, 
and even the boundary lines of the eternal Antarctic ice, which was quite unbelievable. If that's the case, someone mapped Antarctica centuries before its discovery in 1773. In 1513, European knowledge of the New World was still rudimentary, yet this map portrayed geographic features with an unprecedented level of accuracy for that time. For instance, it depicted the coastline of Antarctica without considering the eternal ice. The last time Antarctica was free of ice was about 34 million years ago. Who could have known the detailed contours of the continent's landmass? How could Peary have had access to such information? Although the map is believed to have been compiled from various sources, including ancient knowledge, could it have been based on insights from lost civilizations? Skeptics suggest that the depiction of Antarctica might be speculative, and the detailed rendering might simply be meticulous artistic license. Mariners of that era expressed their perceptions of the world rather than its actual outlines. Nonetheless, the Piri race map continues to puzzle researchers with its remarkable precision. Perhaps our distant ancestors knew much more about our planet than we do? In 1889, Workers were drilling a water well in Nampa, Idaho, and stumbled upon a tiny clay figurine at a depth of around 300 feet. The artifact was named the Nampa figurine. The female figurine appears to be a handcrafted souvenir, a traditional example of early civilization's creativity. But here's the catch. The depth at which it was found corresponds to geological layers dating back approximately 2 million years ago, well before the appearance of humans on Earth. The region was considered uninhabited during that time. What ancient civilizations could have existed here? Conventional science refers to it as a drilling-induced anomaly, or a more recent artifact that somehow got sucked into deeper layers due to unknown natural processes. The Nampa figurine remains an intriguing enigma in the archaeological community. Archaeologists often discover objects that challenge our understanding of the world, and these perplexing finds usually bring about more questions than answers. These enigmatic discoveries are exemplified by figurines found at the al Ubaid site in Iraq, predating even the Sumerian civilization. The figurines, dated from the 6th to 4th centuries BCE, have humanoid forms but display distinct reptilian features, elongated almond-shaped heads, serpent-like eyes, and scaly skin. Some figurines even depict humanoid lizards engaged in everyday activities like caring for infants or managing servants. Imagine a lizard nanny. The origin of the Ubaid culture, like the Sumerian, remains unknown. It is believed that this civilization began in the same region, ancient Mesopotamia, in present-day Iraq. Besides reed harvesting, fishing, and farming, they had a developed culture and architecture, including monumental structures. Yet their true purpose remains elusive. Even if they partially associated humans or deities with birds or reptiles, we can only infer that some of their gods emerged from the sea, while others had celestial origins. These stone spheres are hidden deep in the rainforests of Costa Rica, at the mouth of the Dequis River, and they have intrigued archaeologists and researchers. For centuries, these perfect spherical stones, ranging in size from a few centimeters to over two meters in diameter, have captured imaginations and prompted countless speculations about their origin and purpose. While the exact formation process remains a mystery, one thing is clear. They were crafted with such precision that they have baffled experts who are trying to understand how ancient civilizations achieved such symmetrical perfection. The spheres are made of a type of igneous rock called granodiorite, similar to granite, a not-so-soft material. This fact makes the creation even more impressive, and its purpose remains an enigma. There are theories that the spheres were used for astronomical or religious purposes. Alternatively, they might have served as navigation landmarks or territorial boundaries. Another hypothesis suggests that they might have been inherited from a lost ancient civilization, or even have extraterrestrial origins. These spheres have become a national relic for Costa Rica's indigenous population and have been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Attempts to understand their origin and significance continue to this day, but many questions remain unanswered. 
The stone spheres of Costa Rica stand as tangible evidence of the ingenuity and creativity of ancient civilizations, reminding us that the world is still full of countless wonders waiting to be uncovered. In the desolate deserts of Namibia, a unique natural phenomenon known as fairy circles captivates scientists and tourists alike. These patterns consist of circles on the surface of barren land, outlined by grass as if drawn by a contour. From above, they resemble honeycombs and range in diameter from a few meters to several tens of meters, covering extensive areas in Namibia. Local myths attribute these circles to divine intervention, while scientific explanations lean toward termite activity, plant survival competition, seepage of natural gases, and even radioactivity. None of these theories are conclusive, and Namibia continues to fuel scientific debates and amateur curiosity. Tourists are welcomed. These enchanting mysteries of nature still withhold answers to our questions. Lines that are clearly visible on the ground when viewed from above are called geoglyphs. Particularly large lines created by the ancient culture of Peru can be observed in the Nazca Desert. The intrigue deepens as aerial perspectives reveal a multitude of designs, including animals, plants, and geometric shapes etched into the desert floor. The question that baffles scientists is why and how a civilization nearly 2,000 years ago produced such massive works of art that can only be appreciated from a great height. This was seemingly impossible for the Nazca people, and the presumed religious or astronomical purposes of these lines remain unclear. They might have served as a gigantic observatory or an underground water map. There is a suggestion that the lines were part of complex rituals related to water invocation, yet these theories fail to fully explain the scale, precision, and the rationale behind selecting specific symbols. How could such precise depictions be created on such grand scales at all? From an interplanetary airstrip to a colossal astronomical calendar, the Nazca lines still give life to diverse hypotheses as one of the most monumental constructions on Earth, embodying another unresolved mystery of human history. The world of inexplicable stories is not limited to land. The sea also holds its share of mysteries. One of them is the sea around Hook Island in Australia. In a photograph taken in 1964 by Frenchman Robert Le Sarec during a family vacation on the Great Barrier Reef, as he claims, a sea monster was captured. The photo shows a massive creature resembling a giant cephalopod with a length that was supposedly around 20 meters. We can discern in the shallows a huge dark form with a head, eyes, and a sinuous body structure. It was speculated that this could have been a prehistoric sea reptile, similar to a plesiosaur or a giant unknown species of eel. There were theories that it might have been a carefully orchestrated hoax, a plastic sheet twisted to resemble a sea monster. Despite persistent skepticism, the photograph captured the public's imagination, and for decades, Hook Island remained popular. The sea monster remains an unsolved mystery and a fascinating anecdote for cryptozoologists. And again, we will talk about cryptids, either fictional human-animal hybrids or creatures with a real prehistory. We don't know where to classify beings like the Fresno Nightcrawler, a white, two-legged creature with an extremely small body, a round head, and absolutely no arms, meaning its body is mostly legs. It's strange why nature would create something like this at all. This character first appeared in surveillance camera footage in Fresno, California, in the late 2000s. The footage shows a pair of short white legs of the creature walking on a lawn, and later the same creation was captured on video in Yosemite National Park. People once believed that the Fresno Nightcrawler was an Indian legend, but that's not true. Such legends weren't found among the Native Americans. Does this mean we're dealing with extraterrestrials? The form of these beings challenges the traditional explanations of all theories, from extraterrestrial life forms to folklore or the possibility of the existence of cryptid organisms. They don't fit into any existing notion. It all seems too fantastical. Let's leave the conclusions to enthusiasts of mysticism and move on to the next enigma. A photograph taken in the 1920s, before the advent of digital manipulation capabilities, 
shocked society with an image of what appears to be a person levitating in the air. In this photograph, Colin Evans, a medium and spiritualist, is depicted conducting seances in the dark using only a camera with a flash to periodically illuminate the scene. We see him seemingly suspended in the air, surrounded by amazed spectators. Critics claim that the photograph was staged, possibly using concealed support structures or strings, but supporters of spiritualism consider it as evidence of Evans's mediumistic power. In any case, the photo serves as a historical reminder of the widespread fascination with supernatural forces and spiritualist seances at that time. It also highlights the boundaries that many were willing to cross to prove their chosenness. In 1911, a photograph emerged that sparked a storm of debates and speculations. It depicted an aircraft, a dirigible, an aerostat-controlled airship, seemingly hovering over the city of Huntington in the state of West Virginia. But what makes this photograph strange? It's the fact that the design of this dirigible, already advanced for its time, appeared in later years. We see that it has a streamlined shape, multiple propellers, and even the capability to carry a significant number of passengers. This contrasts dramatically with the first rudimentary dirigibles and small-capacity aerostats that marked the beginning of the era of aviation in the early 20th century. Furthermore, this model predates the construction of the first Zeppelin-type airship in the USA by several years. How can this photo be explained? One theory is that it was a pioneering high-tech invention, an unknown ingenious inventor who simply surpassed their time. Some have speculated that it's the first photoshopped image, a precursor to early photo manipulation. However, no evidence of manipulation has been uncovered, although the photographer's identity remains unknown. Let this photograph remain a historical oddity that defies simple explanation while containing a tantalizing glimmer of mystery yet to be unraveled. It's also an archive of aviation history. Dyatlov Pass Incident of 1959, infamously known to all who are interested in hiking and mountaineering, is preserved in photos as evidence. Although the incident of the group's disappearance remains one of the most mysterious events of our time, something might be partially clarified in the future. Nine experienced Russian travelers and mountaineers perished under extremely mysterious and chilling circumstances in the Ural Mountains. From the photos recovered from their cameras, only more questions arise, adding enigma to this event. One of the images shows a blurry figure behind a line of trees, resembling a yeti. Another disturbing photo taken on the expeditions last night reveals a mysterious light or halo in the dark sky. The incident itself remains unexplained, and the eerie final photographs of people destined to die fuel the persistent thought that this might involve either secret military experiments or supernatural entities. The Eileen Moore Lighthouse on a rocky islet off the west coast of Scotland was built in 1899, and a year later, a tragedy occurred that still shrouds it in secrets and speculation, leaving the island uninhabited. In 1900, a mysterious episode took place. Three experienced keepers took shifts at the lighthouse, and every two weeks, a ship visited with necessary supplies, serving as their only connection to the outside world. In December 1900, all three keepers disappeared mysteriously leaving behind an aura of tragedy and lingering questions. A photograph discovered during the subsequent investigation further intensified the mystery. According to the crew of the ship Archtor, passing by the island on December 15, 1900, the lighthouse fire was no longer burning, as recorded in the ship's log. Stormy weather prevented the regular supply ship from reaching the lighthouse, and when it finally became possible, no one greeted the arriving crew. This photograph was already a harbinger of the ensuing catastrophe, and the ominous atmosphere hanging over the deserted lighthouse seemed to testify to the somber events. When the lighthouse was investigated, the suddenness of the disappearance was evident, as if no one had intended to leave. Plates with unfinished meals stood in the kitchen, furniture was overturned, and one of the three coats hung at the entrance. An experienced keeper wouldn't go out in December without proper attire. 
It remains unclear why the doors were securely closed in this situation. A search of the area yielded no results. However, subsequently studying the records of the keepers themselves raised suspicions that the relentless wild winds and storms compelled them to pray fervently and experience unexplainable animalistic fear. Could they have suffered from a collective delusion, or were they swept into the sea by a colossal storm? New evidence discovered at the pier, shreds of ropes that should have been stored in a special box, refutes a natural catastrophe. To this day, rumors and grim beliefs surround the ill-fated island, with reports supposedly coming from subsequent lighthouse keepers on Eileen Moore, describing a wind that called the names of the missing men. Do you want to travel back in time to the Wild West to experience the real gold rush? Can you believe your eyes when you see those very enthusiasts who rushed to the Canadian Northwest in 1896, driven by a painful thirst for wealth? It was a crazy time when the dollar signs shone in the eyes of hunters instead of pupils. In this rare snapshot from 1899, we find ourselves in a time when not everyone had cameras. But even individual frames are enough to assess how arduous the extraction was in both direct and metaphorical senses. Harsh reality, unsanitary conditions, dysentery and malaria, hostility and rivalry. Every day was a struggle for food and survival. It wasn't a circle of like-minded people having tea in Boston, Remember the MGM company's logo, the famous lion's roar on the screen? Let's step into the glamorous world of Hollywood and take a look at the iconic metro goldwyn mayer talisman behind the scenes. Since 1917, MGM featured 11 different lions in the logo, each of which added majesty to the company's image. And now we transport you to 1928, to the very moment when the original living logo, Leo the Lion, was captured on film. An incredible shot featuring fearless American photographer James Recalton in the company of two towering Indians, taken in 1903. It's unknown how their paths crossed, what led these mystical figures to encounter the photographer, but any camera master would envy this shot. East and West come together during crucial negotiations at the dawn of the era of diplomacy, a rare image capturing the delegation of the last Japanese shogunate in Paris. In the photo, we see the French commander of the Imperial Guard Cavalry, Sigismond Guillaume de Berkheim, and Kawadzu Sukakuni, the trusted representative of the mission, accompanied by Mitsuke, a position akin to an inspector, Kawada Hiromu. Historically, Japan had been a closed-off country to foreigners, but in the mid-19th century, the Japanese elite decided to break the country's isolation from the rest of the world. Due to the escalating military situation, Japan was forced to establish contacts with Western powers. Thus, the Aikida mission of 1864 emerged, aimed at negotiating the opening of Japanese ports for international trade. This photograph is a testament to a turning point in history, how our world irreversibly changed as nations learned to engage through trade relations and cultural exchange. Before us is a photograph where the inventor Charles S. L. Baker and his assistant in 1906 demonstrate a heating system, the first radiator. From a young age, Charles Lewis Baker tirelessly worked to uncover the secrets of friction. Decades of experimentation led him, in 1904, to create a device consisting of rotating wooden and metallic cylinders. He then founded a company for boiler production. Driven by boundless ambition, Baker claimed that his invention could utilize any energy source, promising to illuminate and warm homes at half the cost. Isn't it a marvel?
In this captivating double exposure image, the brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla is revealed. This photograph was taken in 1899 in his laboratory in Colorado Springs. Alongside Tesla's mischievous electrical tail, he sent a message through time, writing a note to his friend William Crookes. To my celebrated friend Sir William Crookes, whom I always think of and to whose courteous letters I never reply. At this moment, New York with all its achievements remained far behind, and Tesla stepped into eternity. The dazzling displays of electricity that could be touched intrigued everyone, teasing the world with the ability to tap into Earth's hidden energy reserves. Another incredible historical moment, the invention of the phonograph, a device for recording and reproducing sound. Familiar to us, Thomas Edison and his colleagues illuminated the planet with revolutionary technologies. Now we have entered a new era. Shedding light, we can freeze time in a photograph and capture sound. This trap is called a phonograph. Explaining how it works is complex, almost as miraculous as the light bulb. But we can remember the date and place of its discovery, April 18, 1878, Washington, D.C. Thomas Edison's contribution to the progress of humanity is truly immeasurable. By the way, this sound is also recorded thanks to his discovery. Hey, can you hear my voice? And as for me, I'm in a different place right now. That's quite the trick, isn't it? A captivating moment frozen in time. In the year 1911, a mighty airship from the electromechanical factory of Siemens Schuckert took to the sky. We witness its inaugural test flight, the culmination of the tireless efforts of the Brilliant Minds team. The ambitious and innovative airship Marvel challenged conventions, replacing the old rigid structure with a revolutionary design. This aerial Marvel, with 500 horsepower, effortlessly reached a speed of 72 kilometers per hour with an 11-member crew on board. Before our eyes, the living winds of progress carry humanity to new heights. Wilhelm von Siemens' hangar transports you to the dawn of the 20th century when dreams of flight turned into obsession and the sky beckoned with endless possibilities. In 1907, the factory began constructing a hangar for airships, as advanced explorers like Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin and other aviation pioneers were already soaring in the skies. Inspired by their triumphs, Wilhelm von Siemens was determined to advance this technological marvel. Thus, the expansive aero garage designed by the brilliant Karl Janisch appeared in the estate of Bischofsdorf. This monumental structure was not just a large parking space, it was a witness to the birth of a new era, the era of aviation. We are currently witnessing a historic moment, the beginning of the era of human flight. In Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in 1903, the first airplane took to the air an epic milestone. The history of aviation is unfolding before our eyes. The sand dunes of this place immortalized the Wright brothers. They chose this barren land with steady winds for their experimental flights. And now, this city has become the cradle of aviation, and we have a photo of the first takeoff of an airplane on Earth. On the archipelago of Spitsbergen, 1,200 kilometers from the North Pole, stands the city of Nye Alisund. And on its central avenue, facing the arrivals, stands a weathered bronze bust dedicated to the most famous guest. Roald Engelbert Gravning Amundsen, a legendary Norwegian explorer, welcomes tourists and locals, the dog sled teams flying by. It was here that he walked the earth for the last time on that fateful morning of May 16th, 1926. The monumental journey aboard the mighty airship Norway, with a brave crew of 15, started with a tailwind. They ascended towards the North Pole, defying gravity and inscribing their names in the annals of history. It is known that Amundsen perished in the expedition to rescue his companion, Umberto Nobile. A mesmerizing scene from Egypt, 
frozen in time in this charming photograph from 1917. Behold the wonderful panorama with lush greenery, a true oasis in the desert. This rare image encapsulates enchanting nostalgia and the serenity of a bygone era. The sands are eternal, the pyramids immortal, the camel leisurely strolls and no one is in a hurry. We are now going to the 1920s and attending a spiritual session where something unusual will happen. The ethereal and the earthly will converge in a magical interaction and lift a musical instrument into the air. This otherworldly phenomenon occurred during a gathering where the living sought to communicate with the departed. It's strange how this instrument could have helped them. Perhaps they were summoning the spirit of an Arabian Paganini? This moment was captured in Cromwell, England, just after the end of World War I. The entire flight crew gathered for a final group photograph. They wanted to preserve a cherished memory of their time together. But the tragic imprint of war marked this frame as well. Freddie Jackson, an aircraft mechanic, tragically died shortly before the photo was taken in a heart-wrenching accident. He accidentally walked into a spinning propeller. When the photo was developed, a wave of horror swept through the group. Behind one of the pilots in the frame, a pale, shadowed face was visible, unmistakably Freddy's, recognized by those who knew him well. On that same morning before the shoot, his memorial service had taken place, and he should not have been present in the photo at all. The ghostly image stood with an uncovered head, unlike the caps worn by the officers surrounding him. Could it be that even after death, Freddy found a way to join the final photo with his comrades? Skeptics claim that during the flash, the pilot accidentally duplicated his image. But then, where did the cap disappear to? Do you believe in ghosts? A revolutionary achievement in American history and its pivotal moment. In this photograph, we see the junction of railroad tracks. This meeting was called the Promontory Summit and took place in the state of Utah. On May 10th, 1869, the railroad connected distant parts of the vast continent. In our day, we take modern conveniences like highways and satellite communication for granted. But back then, this monumental project signified the effort of thousands of people. We are fortunate to witness this, a remarkable event frozen in time, not only through these photographs, but even captured on film. Let's give a standing ovation. In the past, accidents on the railway were more common in the United Kingdom and often led to tragic outcomes. Fortunately, such incidents are extremely rare today. But let's travel back to December 17, 1915, when at the junction in St. Bede near Jero, early in the morning at 7.20 in the fog, a freight train passed a signal box and onto the main track. The accident occurred due to a signalman's mistake. He didn't see that the freight train had derailed and its locomotive had fallen onto the track. This blocked the way for a passenger train traveling from South Shields to Newcastle. The passenger train collided with the fallen locomotive at a speed of 30 miles per hour, causing two carriages to overturn and become entangled with other wreckage. The most horrifying part was that the lighting in the carriages was gas-based and the passenger compartments caught fire resulting in the deaths of 19 people, including a firefighter, and 81 others were injured. The driver of the freight train was also at fault. He waited for 17 minutes without sending anyone to the signal box to report the incident. Had he done so, there might have been an accident instead of a catastrophe. The major accidents of 1907 and 1915 became the most significant in terms of casualties in the United Kingdom. We are all familiar with the heart-wrenching story of the Titanic, and our hearts still ache for the lost lives. But in this rare photograph, we see the ship alive and undamaged, as they say, sailing at full speed. Imagine if this moment could truly be frozen in time, and the hopeful and excited passengers never had to experience the ice, horror, and death. 
Here's another echo of the Titanic tragedy, a photo from the deck of the ship, Carpathia, which answered the desperate call and came to the rescue. This snapshot was taken by one of its passengers at the moment when the survivors, driven to madness by fear and loss, arrived on the Carpathia in lifeboats. It's such a pity there couldn't have been many more of them. The apparent simplicity of the scene hides the consequences of a painful night, and those who remained alive in the relentless sea will never forget those who went into the depths with the magnificent yet defeated giant ship. A Pivotal Moment in History Sunday, September 3, 1967. Sweden undergoes radical changes. The country switches from left-hand traffic to right-hand traffic. But isn't what we see in the photo a kind of chaos? This is no walk in the park. Chaos in the streets and horror on people's faces are evident. Proof lies in the morning of the first day. The implementation of this innovation is far from ideal, even if it's a Sunday. We suppose local pubs and bars were packed to the brim by noon. And here we call it the National Tin Day. In the same 1920s, when some delved into mysticism to give themselves a thrill, a group of daredevils set out for the same tangible material height, seeking adventure in the sky. In this snapshot, fearless skyscraper builders are captured challenging human capabilities. Workers hang onto chains suspended in the air on the side of the under-construction tower. Their courage defies logic, and their audacity knows no bounds. Surely, it's fun to sway in the wind at Statue of Liberty face level without any safety harness? Tell me, the construction site of skyscrapers was like honey spread for all kinds of tricks. Acrobats Charlie Smith, Jewel Waddock, and Jimmy Carrigan amazed the world with their stunning act. Imagine them balancing on a narrow ledge 86 stories high in the sky above Manhattan. It's like standing on a strip of newspaper in open space. Without any safety nets or enhancements, only builders of a monumental scale and window cleaners could understand the level of adrenaline these acrobats felt. The only people who conquered the Empire State Building and left everyone who saw this performance breathless. By the way, they were invited again to repeat the stunt. By now, they've trained their nerves of steel What do you think the structure is about? You'll never guess. Imagine an architectural innovative masterpiece that arose in the late 19th century on the charming streets of Paris, causing indignation among many residents. They took Gustave Eiffel's creation. Yes, that very tower without which it's now impossible to imagine the French capital. Let's go back to 1887 and look at the novelty through the eyes of contemporaries. It clearly reveled in its superiority, rising above the horizon and defying the clouds. Later, having grown fond of the Eiffel Tower, the Parisians nicknamed it La Dame de Fer, the Iron Lady. Today, this lacy metal marvel is France's pride and one of the most beloved and visited monuments in the world. But isn't it beautiful? In 1875, a charming photograph was taken a magnificent gift from France to the United States. Here we have parts of the Statue of Liberty. We can see her hands. Skilled craftsmen sculpted the statue in Bartholdi's Paris workshop during the winter of 1882. And finally, it gained its integrity, towering over the rooftops of Paris in 1884, already beyond Bartholdi's studio. No, we didn't make a mistake. And how else to call the landing on the moon? Neil Armstrong, the first person to step on the lunar surface, is known to us from iconic photos in a spacesuit and with the flag that reads, Here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. But few have seen this first space selfie he took inside the spacecraft. Need I say that all emotions are written on the astronaut's face? The 1969 expedition was a triumphant space mission for the USA, 
But this photo reveals the scale of one person's personal achievement in the vast expanse of the universe. During World War II, photography was widely used, and we are left with countless horrifying images as a reminder. In this shot, we witness a naval landing operation overlord on June 6, 1944 in Normandy, where the forces of the anti-Hitler coalition allies, including the USA, Great Britain and Canada, landed to liberate northwestern France. This single frame gives us an idea of what it was like for these brave soldiers to plunge right into the jaws of death. They were not stepping onto a ballroom floor from the ship, but into the battlefield, into the very abyss of hell. How many of them will survive an hour? Perhaps this was the last picture for many of them, true heroes of their grim era. We see a regal figure in full military attire. Can you imagine that the energetic young Queen Elizabeth worked as a mechanic during World War II? Starting in 1939, she repaired vehicles. Speaking of female power, here's someone who demonstrated true resilience, providing real assistance in wartime efforts. The Queen proved she was not just a figurehead, but a true force. Elizabeth handled mechanics in the garage with the same elegance and grace as she sipped tea from royal porcelain. What do you know about the mesmerizing phenomenon known as the Hestalen Lights? In the Norwegian valley called Hestalen, residents began witnessing rather peculiar phenomena in the sky. It wasn't like the northern lights, comets, or alien spacecraft. To this day, the mystery remains unexplained. Mysterious lights appear during both day and night, gracefully moving through the air in flashes, streaks, patches, or shapes. They can manifest above or below the horizon, shining in bright shades of white, yellow, and red. Their unearthly silhouettes leave witnesses in awe. Sometimes, they streak across the sky at incredible speeds, and other times, they gently sway back and forth or simply hang in the air. Reports of this phenomenon date back to the 1930s, and the lights reached their peak activity from December 1981 to the middle of 1984. Tourists flocked to the valley, and the lights would appear in the sky 15 to 20 times a week. In recent years, the number of observations has decreased, but scientists are still searching for explanations attributing it to the luminescence of sulfur gases or forms of ball lightning. Nonetheless, the enchanting Hestalen phenomenon is a reality and a delightful surprise from nature's inventive side. In 1942, the sky over Los Angeles unexpectedly turned into a battlefield. Powerful beams pierced the sky over the City of Angels, and the only explanation was the invasion of genuine extraterrestrials. Incredibly, but a fact, here it is before you, this frame. Rays radiating like stars from a single center high in the sky, the shape of which resembles a flying saucer with lights on the underside. Admit it, the version of a Japanese attack seems quite feeble. Moreover, there were numerous real eyewitnesses to the phenomenon. Although the extraterrestrial invasion was never officially acknowledged, Stephen Nelson, the director of the Fort MacArthur Museum, stands at the center of disputes accusing official sources of hiding information. But the fact remains a fact. The long and bright tail of this enigma stretches straight into the California night sky. Deserts conceal unfathomable wonders created, however, by human hands. The secret locked within gigantic stone wheels, known as geoglyphs, Massive relief drawings on the ground spread across a vast expanse from Syria to Saudi Arabia. Invisible from the ground but clearly readable from the air, these ancient geoglyphs resemble mysterious cosmic gears. However, what do these impressive patterns mean? Only through the latest satellite cartography and aerial photography in Jordan are we beginning to uncover their true scale. Archaeologists refer to them as wheels. The circles vary in design and date back millennia. 
These enigmatic structures adorn lava fields with their sizes ranging from 25 to 70 meters in diameter. And the latest photo was sent to us by our subscriber via email, assuring that it's not a fake. They didn't provide any more information about this photograph. Let's leave this photo to you for discussion in the comments. And if you also have any materials, feel free to send them to us at our email address provided in the description. These photographs scared the world. Who would not be terrified by a frame in which three people are flying through the sky? You will, of course, immediately dismiss such a possibility. But what do you know about bioengineering? One of the most enticing prospects for the future is the idea that people might eventually evolve to fly. Birds took millions of years to develop light bones, special muscles and wings, but humans are built differently. Bioengineering poses the question, can we go through genetic manipulations to acquire superpowers? Judging by this photo, someone has already succeeded. A 1920 photograph caused a lot of controversy. It shows a New York City police officer literally hanging in the air on a beam of a skyscraper being built over Times Square. The view is beautiful, but if you've ever hung from a tree and looked down, then this cop's nerves must be stronger than the very beam he's holding on to. By the way, a reasonable question. Was the photographer also hanging in the air? His name is unknown, but theoretically, he must have been secured somewhere. Both hands are occupied during photography. The picture looks as authentic as the stunts of contemporaries of the silent movie era. We know that such artists as Harold Lloyd or Buster Keaton performed them independently. Everything was real. Likely, the photo is real, and it shows a similar daring number performed by a policeman or pilot, which the frame hints at. If it's a staging, then it has three options. Wallpapers in the background, a safety net, or copy-paste commands on the keyboard. In this photo from 1887, the grand construction of the world-famous masterpiece, the Eiffel Tower, is depicted. The structure consists of four iron supports that bend and meet at the top, forming something like a pyramid. The columns are connected to each other with horizontal beams and diagonal arched braces, creating a lattice structure. This extremely stable framework looks quite airy. It's strange that such a huge tower was built by only 300 people in two years. At that time, it became the tallest structure in the world with a height of 300 meters. How was it possible to achieve such speed using the resources of that era, which are in no comparison with today's construction technologies? And even here, there were mystical interpretations. Someone spread a rumor that the idea and design of the tower was an extraterrestrial gift presented by aliens several hundred years ago, or that those 300 builders possessed supernatural power. I'm not sure about either hypothesis, but there's definitely some magic in Gustav Eiffel's tower. The St. Augustine Lighthouse in St. Augustine was built in 1874 and has undergone many changes since then. The wooden watchtower was erected by Spanish settlers at the end of the 16th century, and later, as demanded by time, the current lighthouse was erected on the same site. For decades, it played a crucial role in safe navigation along the treacherous waters of the Florida coastline. With the advent of the 20th century and the arrival of technologies, the traditional role of lighthouses and their keepers began to fade into the past. By the middle of the 20th century, most lighthouses switched to automatic mode, marking the end of an era, but not diminishing their historical and architectural significance. For example, the St. Augustine Lighthouse remains an important tourist attraction, not only for its beauty, but also for its connection with paranormal phenomena. The most intriguing story of this place is the Lady on the Tower. Over the years, visitors have reported seeing a mysterious woman at the top of the lighthouse. She seems to stand there and look out to sea. These testimonies have led to speculation. It was suggested that she might be connected to a former lighthouse keeper or mourning a lost love. Regardless of the truth, the tale of the lady on the tower has become an integral part of St. Augustine's history. Indeed, the lighthouse is that very structure that suits mysteries and ghosts well. 
A ghost upside down in a family photo is too much even for a fake. This famous and terrifying photo was taken in the year 1950. One of the ladies in the frame is named Joan Cooper, and according to her testimony, nothing strange or scary was happening at that time. The family is at the festive table in a good mood, with children in their arms. Where did the silhouette of a dead man hanging from the ceiling come from? Its appearance only became noticeable during the development of the negative. The story of the photo is as follows. The Cooper family moved to a new house in Texas and decided to celebrate the housewarming. This moment was captured on camera by the head of the family. Then there was no exposure on cameras yet. If it was a prank, then these kids are in for a brilliant acting career. If a ghost, shouldn't they have felt uncomfortable with a corpse on the ceiling? If it's a fake, then it contradicts the laws of gravity. So what is it then? There could well have been an erroneous overlay of frames. The amateur photographer forgot to advance the frame and pressed the button. You probably forgot that cameras used to be manual. A lot had to be done by hand. And often a double shot on one frame yielded strange collages. But who was in the second frame? A ballerina or acrobat in a strange pose. Some non-domestic picture. Nevertheless, most of the famous mystical images turned out to be fakes, and only these two guys from the photo can clarify something for us now, although they are probably grandfathers by now. This photograph was taken in the year 1898. It depicts a lady medium known as Eusapia Palladino. The frame was shot during a seance by a French physicist. Palladino claimed to have the ability to communicate with the dead and produce various physical phenomena, including moving objects. Her manipulations, which included glowing hands and levitating tables, raised doubts about their authenticity. But the man who took the photo insisted that this flying table was under strict control. The medium was held by the hands and feet by two assistants. However, despite their efforts, the table rose into the air without any contact with Palladino. The photograph was not processed or altered, and in any case, there were other witnesses at the seance, and besides the table, other wonders were demonstrated. Glowing hands, or a face covered in chalk. Of course, such tricks are controversial evidence of Palladino's power, and some skeptics note the unnatural position of her body in the photo, the absence of shadows under the table, and the possible presence of auxiliary tricks. But who knows? In the mid-90s, a chilling discovery happened in the Ras al Khaima cave in the United Arab Emirates. A tourist took a photo capturing a bizarre creature lurking in the depths of the cave. Strangely, after he took the picture, people heard a frightened boy's scream echoing in the darkness. Disturbed by the eerie sight, the tourists reported it to the authorities, and the police were dispatched for a thorough search of the cave. To everyone's horror, near the spot where the photo was taken, they soon stumbled upon a lifeless human body hidden in a crevice. The photo of the mysterious creature quickly went around the world, but the story remains shrouded in doubtful aura. Was the creature in the cave animated, or could it be a light illusion? The dark space is conducive to hallucinations. Then how did the picture, the scream, and the dead body end up connected in one story? No answers to these questions have been heard, and we are still alone with the mystery of the cave spirit. And in this photo, a real ghost, undeniable. There's definitely someone strange here. This photo has become one of the most famous portraits of a ghost. The shot was taken in 1963 by Reverend Kenneth F. Lord in the Church of Christ, the consoler at Newby Hall in North Yorkshire, England. When he was photographing, he noticed nothing mystical, but then a creepy semi-transparent figure appeared in the photo, dressed in the robe of a 16th century monk with a face hidden by a white cloth. Many believe in the authenticity of the photo. It's hard to imagine that someone could dress up like this for a fake. If you compare the scale of the figure with the interior, its height should be about two and a half meters. Since the legs are not visible, a real person would have had to stand on a platform. Photo experts, having examined the picture, dismiss the possibility of double exposure. In any case, whether true or not, this photo emits a creepy atmosphere. We are not mistaken in that. The picture reeks of grave horror. 
Hampton Court Palace in England, a grandiose building, which stands apart not only as a historical and architectural wonder, all its halls are filled with stories that will keep you awake at night for many years. In the cold corridors and rooms of this castle, many ghosts reside, each with their own character. Some whisper in corners, some scream piercingly in the dungeons, and some intertwine into the fabrics of tapestries and portraits. All this has been told by both the palace's guards and numerous visitors. A creepy place, isn't it? In these surveillance camera photos from 2003, we see a figure in whimsical clothing. Who knows if the spirit of Henry VII still hasn't left his home? Only for some reason, he was exiting through the fire door, but three times no less. For decades, mysterious phenomena have been reported on a quiet road near the border between the American states of Missouri and Oklahoma, baffling locals from both states and travelers. An unknown light suddenly appears, moves, and vanishes here. The hovering lights, sometimes colored, dance, hover like a ghost, and then disappear just as suddenly. Native legends still linger in these parts, with indigenous people interpreting them as the wandering spirits of ancient warriors. Scientists remind us that the lights could be gases or refracted light from distant highways. To this day, the mystery of the ghostly light remains in the hands of photography enthusiasts who try to capture these lights on camera. A mysterious phenomenon occurs on the Mekong River in Asia. There, glowing fireballs known as Nagas rise from the water into the sky. There is a scientific theory about their origin, a natural chemical reaction involving methane and phosphine gases, which are released from the riverbed and ignite due to thermal or electrical impulses. There is a non-scientific view insisting that the fireballs are caused by human intervention, just the firing of tracer bullets or signal flares from the opposite side of the river, with no mystique or legends involved. This theory is based on documentary footage, Someone filmed soldiers shooting into the water during a festival. There's another explanation, based on the name of the balls. People believe that Nagas arise from a supernatural force, like the breath of a giant serpent named Naga, which, of course, lives in the river. Seriously, the word Naga means a large mythical serpent in many Asian languages, so there is a common root after all. Naga is mentioned in folklore as a sacred and powerful creature that protects and blesses people. But why these balls appear, we still do not know. What do you recognize in this picture? Skunk ape, a creature that supposedly lives deep in the swamps of Florida. Locals, enthusiasts for spreading rumors about a mysterious bipedal creature that differs little from Bigfoot, but is somehow called skunk ape. What distinguishes this species from a hallucination is that when this animal appeared, people nearby sensed a characteristic sharp smell similar to rotten eggs or methane. Everyone remembers how terribly skunks stink? In this image, only a hunched figure with glowing eyes hiding in the bushes is visible. And since this photo appeared online, debates have not ceased. Some recognize this image as irrefutable evidence of the existence of the skunk ape. Military pilots sometimes see more than their combat mission. In 1959, an unusual report came from Colonel Remy van Leerde, a Belgian who was a top-class pilot in the British and Belgian Air Forces and fought against the Nazis during World War II. He had six enemy planes shot down and 44 flying bombs neutralized to his credit, so the colonel could be trusted without a doubt Flying over the Katanga province in the Belgium-occupied area of the Republic of Congo, he filmed from a helicopter a huge snake, whose length reached at least 50 meters. It must be admitted that these are unprecedented sizes for a snake. He claimed that its triangular head was almost one meter in length, and the thickness was more than half a meter. Can you imagine such a monster? Remy circled the snake several times, its body had a brownish-green coloration, while its belly was white. The pilot claimed that when he approached the snake too closely, it took a threatening pose and raised its head along with part of its body three meters above the ground. 
The largest known species of snakes are the green anaconda, or the African rock python. However, the anaconda is not found in these areas and is quite slow by nature, and this snake, seeing the approaching helicopter, took an attacking pose. The largest local reticulated python was only 3.2 meters long. Could it be some previously unseen new species of snake or king cobra? This spiky suit, covered with spikes, is shrouded in mystery. Do you believe that no one guesses its real purpose? Could it be a hunting suit for bear hunting, used in the 1800s? How else could it be used? Someone suggested that this suit could well serve as a carnival costume at the local Vulture Bird Festival in Basel, Switzerland. This carnival includes pagan rituals and dances on the streets of the city. The most suitable costume for a solo dance, don't you think? If you know what this thing is, please let us know. On a December morning in 2009, residents of northern Norway witnessed an unusual spectacle in the sky. A white spiral of light, accompanied by a blue beam, expanded and rotated, creating an ethereal halo around it. The celestial display lasted for almost 10 minutes before dissipating and caused awe among viewers, subsequently leading to a flurry of speculation. Theories revolved around the involvement of aliens or a new atmospheric phenomenon, but social networks stirred a true frenzy, giving rise to numerous theories. However, the ultimate answer came from an unexpected source. The Ministry of Finance of Russia later confirmed that this event was the result of an unsuccessful test launch of the intercontinental ballistic missile Bulava. The cause was a technological flaw, and the spiral pattern was due to the rotation of the missile and light reflections that created the background. Although the mystery of the Norwegian spiral anomaly was solved, some speculated that the state tests were just a cover-up for something bigger. Thanks for this clarification as well. In the midst of the vast expanse known as Siberia stands a strange crater resembling a large stone mound with a pronounced hollow center. This structure baffled researchers. No one knows anything about its origin. The Lone Hill, about 40 meters high and about 100 meters in diameter, does not fit the theory of crater formation. Could it have been the result of a meteorite impact or volcanic activity? Some link its appearance to the explosion of underground gases. Analysis using radiocarbon dating indicates a relatively young geological age for this structure. It appeared about 500 years ago. It is now the subject of active discussions. The indigenous people of the region, the Yakuts, offer their own versions. For them, the crater is a place filled with legends. Some consider it a portal to another world. There are only two possible origins of the crater the result of Earth's internal forces or cosmic intervention. We will wait for answers to these questions. This photo was taken from the Apollo 17 spacecraft during its last flight to the moon, and the frame captures a place known as Geophone Rock. In NASA's catalog, the image is listed as an empty image, simply a corrupted file. But if you look closely, it is not empty. We clearly see a triangular shadow on the lunar surface which resembles a pyramid. The anomaly was attempted to be explained as a natural formation on the moon, and there was even a hypothesis that it is a structure, an ancient extraterrestrial structure. But the most scientific explanation leans towards a play of shadows. The lunar surface is very uneven. Its rocky formations can cast whimsical shadows and create optical illusions, which can be interpreted in absolutely different ways depending on the angle. Further analysis of the Apollo 17 images showed that the pyramid could have arisen from the fall of sunlight at a low angle combined with the features of the topography. But someone still wants to believe that the pyramid is real and that it was created by an extraterrestrial civilization. That way, the truth is more interesting. In the Apollo 14 mission, there remained an unresolved mystery. Let's look at it. In this image, we see a strange blue light at a significant distance. Where could it come from on the moon? According to one theory, were the lunar lights caused by the reflection of sunlight or a thermal blanket that was lost and went into free space travel? This blue light was so bright that it resembled the glow of a sapphire, 
and why didn't anyone see it during other missions, and also, why did it move and change shape? There were suggestions that the light was caused by an electrostatic discharge or a plasma phenomenon on the lunar surface, but these are just hypotheses. No scientific explanation for the blue fires on the moon was found. The photo was taken by NASA's rover at the end of 2012. We observe on it a large number of hematite clumps. This is a possible sign of past presence of water on the red planet. Hematite is an iron oxide that forms with the mandatory participation of water. Thus, the gray hematite found here proves the presence of water on Mars in the past. These spherules look like blueberries, only much larger, and they are scattered everywhere. Scientists at the University of Western Ontario assert that this cosmogenic rock, impactites, forms when cosmic bodies hit the surface or when a meteorite explodes. In this process, the material melts and acquires a rounded shape. Scientists have repeatedly suggested that there could have been water on Mars before, so why not consider substantial mineral evidence? This photo shoot has become legendary for its tales of a mysterious space wanderer, an alien spacecraft known as the Black Knight. It is said that this ancient spaceship has been orbiting Earth for thousands of years and that NASA is hiding this from us. Other opinions suggest that this hoax was created by agencies to distract public attention from spy satellites and the space race rivalry. Meanwhile, a third perspective insists that this knight is indeed a spy agent, launched by the Soviet Union or the USA during the Cold War, and has since been monitoring Earth. Removing the ship from orbit is much more difficult than launching it, don't you think? This photograph, taken in 1998 from aboard the Endeavour during a NASA mission named STS-88, actually showed a piece of the so-called thermal blanket used to protect space instruments. It was lost during the mission. Numerous such objects drift in space, burning up when entering Earth's atmosphere. But one of the three or all opinions might be confirmed over time. Aliens, spies, or other dark secrets in space probably exist. The American fighter bomber F-18, nicknamed Hornet, is a fast and maneuverable machine, but not perfect enough to compete with unidentified flying objects in the sky. Repeatedly, pilots of these aircraft have reported strange lights and unexplained aerial phenomena. However, how many of these reports have been made public? and how many have settled in the desks of offices. Over the past decades, UFO observations have seen ups and downs because aliens have earthbound competitors in the form of drones and other technological advancements. As progress continues, cosmic phenomena also grace Earth with attention. Meteor showers, invasions of comet remnants, or other stellar activities have not disappeared. There's just much more interesting stuff now. But the facts remain fighter pilots see more than ground observers. In 1978, a young Australian pilot named Frederick Valentich was on a routine flight to King Island, but soon the flight ceased to be ordinary. The pilot reported to the Melbourne Aviation Bureau that he was being followed by an unidentified aircraft, a brightly glowing object with a metallic sheen. It seemed to move at tremendous speed, maneuvering in ways no modern aircraft could. Even more strange was that immediately after reporting the pursuit, the pilot mentioned engine troubles and then went silent. A haunting silence followed and the plane disappeared. An extensive search lasting several days covered vast areas, but neither the pilot nor the plane was found. Was he captured by an alien spacecraft and how can a flying plane be taken or destroyed without a trace? The hypothesis remains that the incident was related to a military event or secret government mission, but, alas, there are no updates. Another alleged alien observation involving a pilot. The name Kenneth Arnold became known because of his encounter with a UFO. In 1947, during a flight near Mount Rainier in Washington, Arnold reported that he saw nine unusual objects in the sky moving at a staggering speed in a wavy motion and resembling flat saucers. Does this description ring a bell? Yes, the term flying saucer was coined right then. His detailed report described the object as flat, shiny, and somewhat crescent-shaped, 
reflecting sunlight like a mirror. The news spread quickly, and this incident preceded the famous Roswell incident by just a few weeks, where debris of an extraterrestrial spacecraft was allegedly found. Arnold's encounter with the mysterious craft not only stirred curiosity, but also fueled discussions about the existence of unidentified flying objects, and his detailed report of the event included data about the astonishing speed, about 1,700 miles per hour, multiply by about one and a half, and you get an unimaginable 2,700 kilometers per hour. Arnold's observations played a crucial role in popularizing UFOs and became a catalyst for many other reports. They literally poured in from different corners of the USA. Apparently, people were afraid to talk about it before, fearing they would be considered insane. But now, after the Loud case, they dared to share their experience. The government had to take measures to calm the public from mass hysteria, trying by all means to retract Arnold's observations and label them as erroneously identified natural phenomena. Whatever, but we're not out of our minds, and we see that it's neither lightning nor a plane. So the modern era of UFOs is almost a century old, and we are still unsure. Was it or wasn't it? Wasn't it or was it? On the night of February 24th, 1942, just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, something strange happened in Los Angeles. Sirens sounded and lights shone in the sky, but in the morning, no enemy planes were found. It was said to be a false alarm. Others claimed to have seen something, but who at that time could agree that the city was attacked by strange flying spheres or unidentified flying objects? To this day, what happened on the night of 1942 remains a mystery. Perhaps some grandparents can confirm that they saw it. Could you tell us about this event if you've heard anything? So, friends, this was an hour of the strangest, creepiest, and unexplainable photographs that have stumped all scientists. If you like this episode and suddenly you want to see something similar, the next part, then like, subscribe to the channel and do not forget to write the keyword ROCKET so I will know that you watched until the very end. Thank you very much for watching and see you in our new episode.